this video I'm going to be doing the fit and finish on a skinning knife that I made yesterday, or made in the last one. Let's get a good feel for it. I'll st I've been grinding on it already. I've already done the heat treat on it, quenched it, hardened it up. And uh, now I'm going to put the finish on the blade. And the thing to have to be careful of whenever you're doing the finish is when you're grinding, you can get it a little uneven and get a little twist in it. or You can grind too much off. And I want to try to keep it straight. Plus, I want to get the bevels in it. And uh, so that's what I'm going to be doing today. I'm doing this. I'll hold it on here flat like that. Let it make sure that I get it. it help make sure I get it all smoothed out and even. And if I've got big hump in it somewhere then sometimes I'll come and I'll run it like that until I and then switch back over and it'll it'll show me it'll be a slicker side and a rougher side you can tell see this on the camera or not but right here see it's made it really smooth right there and it's really rough down here still well I know that that's got a it's thicker right here than it is down here so I'll touch it I'll hit that spot for a second So this thing, it gets hot, all the friction from that sanding belt. And that's why every once in a while you see me just, and then come back up and some dipping it, in, dipping it in the water bucket, cool it off. You don't want you, you don't want the blade to get too hot after you've quenched it, after you've heat treated it. If it turns black or blue or any color, then You've run the, you've run that blade. You've run run the edge of it. If it's where the edge is going to be. It's it's no longer. It's no good no more. It softened the metal up. So I've been grinding on that for few minutes and you can start to see how it's smoothing out and and the rough part that I was talking about it's right here see it's a little lower this hair is a little higher on the where it's real smooth and I'll just keep working that down keep doing that until it's all all smooth yeah. So now I'm going to start putting the bevel, I'm going to start putting the bevel in the blade, right down through here. And whenever I do that, I have to be real steady and go real, go steady with it, almost same, 
like moving at the same speed across the belt, back and forth, like making it real good and even. Now the, the way I like to do it is I hold my blade ups, upside down and just go back and forth. Remember, I can't, not to get the tip too hot, the tip will get hotter the quickest because there's less metal there. So it gets hotter faster. I don't want to burn that tip up. If I burn it up, cause it to change colors, then it's no good no more. So I'm done cleaning up on this blade and grinding it and I got the bevel in it. It's looking pretty good. Next thing I'm going to do is before I put the handle on, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put that on the buffing wheel. Now back here on the on the tang where the handle is going to go, I roughed that up a little more. I, I roughed it up that way the epoxy will hold the handle on there better. or help hold it on there better but uh that's what it's looking like so far so i'm gonna get that in the buffing wheel and wanna and find some handle material and i'll be right back right. so i got some oak handle scales here that i had made up that's what i'm going to use i'm going to know what what i do is I tape that on there. I'll tape those on. I don't like to fight with them, and it helps uh, keep the keep it on there good and straight. And uh, what I'll do is, whenever I get the holes drilled, I'll go ahead and mark which uh, mark these scales, which side of the blade it was on, and which way they was which way that they go on that way I don't get confused because sometimes if you get them mixed up one side to the other that might not it might not line up right might have a little trouble getting the pins in there So now that I got that done, I'm going to get me some pins. I'm going to take these off and I'm going to get me some pins and I'm going to stick these together. And then I'm going to make out the shape. 
also going to go ahead and mark this. I know that this is on the right side. So I'll put a RT on there. This one will be the left side, so I'll put a LF for left. And I'm saying right left because looking down the blade would be right left. Now I got my two pins. That's all, all I need for this. I've got it coming through, holding it on the, with the blade, and I'm going to hold it, look at it. I want to just start making out the shape for where, where my handle is. So I want to take just a little bit off right there. And then down here, I want to come back this way. Now, whenever I go to, after I get these on here, you can see there's still quite a bit right here, but I'll, I'll cut that out and then sand it down to match up with the handle. kind of held it on there to darken it up darken it up a little bit to give a little more character on the on the end of it that's right, so I've had this uh I had an idea to hit me whenever while I was getting that ready I had an idea to hit me I think I'm gonna put a brass inlay on this handle make it look a little better than that way uh if somebody somebody wanted to, they can go and they can get something engraved in it, have it pers give it their own person personalization. So that's what I'm gonna I'm gonna start now. I'm gonna get this ready to do a a brass inlay before I put the handle on this completely, because that way if I mess up, I can just put another set of scales on it. What I've got for for the brass inlay, what I'm going to use, it's an old symbol. I'm going to cut it cut it out of that. And I've, I've got two of them right there, and I'm going to shape them up. Okay, I've got them cut and ground down. Now it's time to get this handle, get it ready to put them in there. I've got that cut out of there. I've already drilled me one hole. Now I'm going to drill for the other one. Alright, so now I'm ready to uh, get this handle glued on. And uh, now I'll, I'll glue them inlays, or I'll, I'll set them inlays in it after, after I get the handle glued on. But Whenever, whenever I get ready to glue it on, I go ahead and put the pins on, in, and spread it out like that. And then I'll put on my epoxy, my glue. I'll put it in there and then squeeze it together. The reason I do it like that is to make sure that it's, that it's going to go together good, which I already knew it would because I done had the handle already on here, but. It's just a lot easier, a lot faster. Just go ahead and put that epoxy on it and then just squeeze it together. So I'll get that done and I'll be back. Okay, so I've got the handle glued on. I got the inlays. I glued the handle on first, let it set up. And then I came back and I put the inlays in there and I glued them in. I got the pins. So now I'm ready to start doing the finishing on it. So now I'm going to start sanding on that, smooth it up, make it pretty.
So now I want to take and I'm going to hand sand the rest of this. I think that the hand sanding, I think you can get a, a lot better finish. So this is what we're looking like so far. And I think I'm going to give it a little darker darker stain on the handle. I think that darker color will bring out that brass a little bit a little bit more. Yeah. I'm only going to do this one coat on it. back and I'll seal this up. Now, take the clean part of my rag and I'm going to go over it brass. i clean it off that brass. That's a, that's, that's one way that's it's one of the skinny knives that I do. And that that was the the brass inlay. That was the first time that I've done done a brass inlay in a handle. I kind of like it. I think I might do more of that. So well, that's it for the skinny knife, and maybe maybe trying it out for too long. Who knows?